name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. <clears throat> Today is the fourth Sunday, the final Sunday of the blessed month of Hathor. And today the gospel is from Mark chapter 10. And as we discussed, one of the themes of this month is the word of God in our lives. The word of God in our lives. And we started this month by reading the story of the parable of the sower. And we read that actually on two consecutive weeks about the word of God being planted in our heart and then that would give fruit to <clears throat> that would give fruit to a trees and give um, once the word of God dwells in our hearts it becomes a big tree giving shelter to everyone. And in the gospel last week we read about discipleship, also the word of God in our lives, how we could become good disciples. To God, And we read last time it said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife or children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And then was a famous verse, Whoever does not bear his cross, come after me and cannot, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And today we continue that theme of carrying our cross. And because in the gospel of today, there was a rich man and he came to Christ and he asked him a very interesting question. The question was, <clears throat> good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And I really admire the rich uh, young man for asking this question for a couple of reasons. There's many good reasons why I like this question. One, it shows that he was thinking about something eternally. He was thinking about his future. He was thinking about eternal life. He had some sort of of appreciation for God. And I think sometimes in our daily lives, maybe we don't appreciate eternity at all. We don't understand eternity. It's a long time away from us, and we really don't have like any concept of eternity. Can you imagine what this world would be like without time? I mean, everything we do is governed by time, but eternity, there really is no time. And so we don't really have a very good understanding of eternity even in like math or philosophy the concept of eternity or infinity is something that is not really well understood and that's why maybe the high school kids that are taking uh, like calculus when you talk about infinity you talk about like approaching infinity or approaching eternity because you really don't understand what eternity is and because we don't really understand what eternity is I think sometimes we misvalue it Sometimes we completely misvalue what eternity is. I'll give you, for instance, a couple examples. Sometimes we're very quick to trade in a few moments of sin, a few moments of sin for eternal life. Looks like, like a, you, you, because you don't understand eternal life, so you're very happy for seconds of entertainment or whatever, and you're willing to trade in eternal life for just, 30 seconds, a minute, uh, an hour, a night, whatever it may be, for, for eternal life. Another example is if I told everyone today, please go home and read your Bibles. And I said, if you go home and read your Bibles, I will give you a million dollars. I think everybody would like, be very excited and very eager to collect their million dollars. And they would go and say, I read everything for a million dollars. But if I said, go home and read the Bible and you will have eternal life, it's a little less, uh, little less uh, appealing. A little, very, <laughs> there's, uh, yeah, not, not appealing at all. It's because we don't really understand the concept of eternity. If we understood the concept of eternity, it'd be, it's a great deal. It's a great deal to go home and read the Bible. And in the end of the gospel today, our Lord uh, St. Peter, at the end, he said, See, we have left all and followed you. We have left all and followed you. And then what our Lord Jesus Christ said to him was very interesting. What our Lord said to him, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is not one who has left house, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers, children, lands, for my sake or the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold, a hundredfold. We have no idea about this hundredfold. Uh, now in this time, he even talks in this time, 
He says, you will receive a hundredfold in this time. And then he says, in the age to come, eternal life. The idea is that eternity not, might not sound like a good deal because we don't understand, but it's the best deal. Eternity is the best deal. So we want to keep our minds on the heavenly. We want to be like this rich man and be thinking about these questions. Where am I going to spend eternal life? In Colossians 2, it says, Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of the earth. And if you think about your day, or your weeks, or your months, or maybe even your years, if you think about your life in general and evaluate yourself, you can begin to assess yourself whether you're focused on the earthly or maybe are you focused on the heavenly. But the idea here is let's be like this rich young man who was focused or at least was thinking about his eternal life. After you're thinking about your eternal life, I think one other thing that I like about this rich young man is that he went and he asked the good teacher. He asked the good teacher. Because the good teacher will have good answers. And I was thinking about this, is that this rich young man, he could have went and he could have asked this question to a lot of people. But why did he go to our Lord Jesus Christ? He went to the best person that could answer his... Sometimes when we have questions like this, we take advice from probably the worst people. <laughs> I mean, not the worst, but maybe not the best. Let's say not the best people. For instance, sometimes we ask our friends for relationship advice, like youth. No offense to your friends, not the best source. Could not, maybe it could be a good source, but probably not the best source for, like, rela- one time I saw at work, coworkers are discussing things about their lives and not the best place to get the best answers. Not the best place to get the best answers. If you want to ask, you have good questions, go and get your answers from a good source. So I know the youth are not going to like me for saying this, but a good source would be your parents. I know it's a tough concept, but your parents actually have like your best interest at heart. So that would be a good reference point. A good reference point would be your servants. Could be your priests. Could be your... Someone, someone good, good teacher. You know, the, the rich man went to a good teacher to get his answers and did not go to someone, his friend or his worker. I'm sure if he went to his coworker and said, what should I do to inherit eternal life? His friend would have been like, give me some money, chill out, relax. But he went to our Lord Jesus Christ. He got a good answer. If you want a good answer, go to our Lord Jesus Christ. He will give you the best answer. The third thing that I like about this question from the rich good, uh, young man is that he showed personal responsibility. He showed personal responsibility. He said, what shall I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal? He didn't ask, what shall you do for me to inherit eternal life? He took it. He had some personal responsibility. And we have to ans- ask ourselves this question as well because the answer is unique to us. <coughs> The answer is very unique to us. What shall I do to inherit eternal life has a different answer for each person in this room. You know, there's common, maybe foundational things that you need to do to inherit eternal life, like (coughs) granted. But then after that, there is some special things that God will ask of you to inherit eternal life. The obvious example of this is St. Anthony. St. Anthony, when he heard this story, and he heard the, what our Lord Jesus Christ told him, the Lord Jesus Christ told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have. Then St. Anthony took that message as something personal. He said, that message was for me. He saw the personal responsibility. He said, that message is for me. And in doing and answering that call, he achieved his salvation. He achieved his eternal life because he answered the call. And so the call for each one of you could be different. Maybe the call for you is to be a monk or a nun. Maybe. That is the path of your salvation. Maybe the path of your salvation is to, could be a career. Could be. Could be a career. That this is the path 
Like all these things are on the path of yourself. Maybe it's a relationship that these things are like integral for your salvation. You know, one of the purposes of marriage, like the grand purpose of marriage is not just companionship. It is to help each other to eternal life. Like that's a, I know a different concept, but the concept of marriage is about eternal. So that's inheriting your like salvation, eternal life. So everything is relative. So that's one thing on the path to eternal life. And everybody in this room has a different calling to do something specific in this life to attain eternal life. So the three things were to keep our eyes on heaven, to go to the right people for advice, and recognize your personal responsibility in answering those, the call. But unfortunately, our, the rich man, he did those three things, but that was still not enough. It was not enough. And the Lord asked him, he said, you know, do you keep the commandments? Do you keep the commandments? And he said, yes, I don't commit adultery. I don't murder. I don't steal. I don't bear false witness, which is probably true of all of us here. I hope we don't have murderers or thieves. Or, but then the Lord said to him something very interesting. He said, one thing you lack. And in another place in Matthew he says, what do I still lack? Means that even though he was living sort of a good life, even though he was following the commandments, even though he was doing things good by whatever standard, by the standards that were set, he was still lacking something. And I was thinking about what was he lacking? What was he lacking? I think he was lacking a personal relationship with God. He was lacking, one of the things we've been writing about in the articles is about the difference between goodness and holiness. He was lacking a relationship with God. He was lacking holiness. Many people are doing good things and many people are doing great things and that's good. But many people are lacking relationships with God. I wonder if we are like this rich young man. We are doing maybe good things, but we are lacking in our relationships. We're lacking in our relationship with God. And then the sad part is, if you think about that, you'll realize maybe there are some things that are hindering that relationship. In the case of today, in the gospel of today, what was hindering the rich man? His riches. He was attached to his riches. And because of his riches, he was not able to let go. Even though he was thinking about eternal life, even though he had done all those things, that we said that are very good. He couldn't let go of his riches. He couldn't sell all and follow God. He couldn't sell all. That was too much for him. So each one of us should take a moment and to think about our like to think about our lives and to think what is preventing us. Think about that. What is preventing us from being good Christians, from being holy people? What is hindering us in our relationship with God? You know, last week I said the verse was if you don't hate your mother or father, wife or children, brothers, sisters. Yes, his own life also he cannot be my disciple. So that's kind of the standard for discipleship. That is kind of the standard. for. So think about your life and think about are there relationships? Are there materialism? Is there something in your life that is hindering your relationship from God to grow? And if there is, try to pluck that out and get rid of it. The last point I want to make about the gospel of today, and this one is a very interesting point, is that the Lord Jesus Christ was having a dialogue with this rich young man, and in the end of the story, the rich young man went his own way, and our Lord Jesus Christ went another way. Which is very, like, appalling, that even the Lord Jesus Christ himself couldn't, convince this man or whatever persuade or whatever you want to call it to convince this man to like sell what he had and the Lord Jesus Christ did something very interesting he didn't bargain with him sometimes we have like this like bargain like mentality like I have to so when the Lord Jesus Christ said said sell all what you have and come follow me and the rich man got sad and left away and went away the Lord Jesus Christ didn't go, well, 
maybe, you know, Hashem Khatrak, 50%. Come, 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 come. 50%. Only do 50%. Or, no, 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 no. 50% is still too much. Ah, just a quarter. No, he said, sell all. He said, sell all. And the guy went away, a different way. So even the Lord Jesus Christ himself was not able to, like, convince. Or sometimes I feel there is, like, uh, some, like, pressure on whatever. Like, we have magic wands. And then, like, if someone says, like, you know, do this, Sabuna, or whatever, like, we'll solve all the... No, like, even the Lord Jesus Christ couldn't solve, like, or couldn't convince this young person to do what was best for him. There's something called personal... And so we have to have... We're very welcoming and we're very accommodating. But the standards of our Lord Jesus Christ, they don't vary. They don't vary. So we don't accommodate. We don't change our standards to be accommodating. We don't. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't, didn't happen in this story. Our Lord Jesus Christ has a standard and He wants to raise us to that standard. He wants to raise us to that standard. I hope today we think about keeping our mind on the heavenly. We ask these questions. We think about eternal life because truly the the reward is is great. If you think about it, really, the reward is great. Keep your mind. Ask those types of questions. Ask those questions to good people. Find good answers from good people. And, And be willing to sacrifice and to deny yourself and carry your cross. And glory be to God forever. Amen.